Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, the energy in here feels great today, doesn't it? Yes. yes. So aloha. 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 I see a lot of new faces. We'll get to you later. <laughs> But for right now, I have a few announcements. Is this kind of a reverb thing happening? No. 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 Reverb. Okay. Uh, we like to start our. Okay. Uh, we like to start our. We're working on that. Just be with me for a moment. <laughs> there we go. Whatever. Yeah. Hello. Turn the game yeah. down. There we go. Uh, now we're ready. Well, we won't rewind either. We'll just say, uh, start where we are. Um, so, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. To my left is Reverend Rita, Hi, Reverend the Rita. co spiritual director. And to my right is our wonderful musical director. Oh, there she is right there, Amy and Jeremy. Oh, and it just feels good to land, doesn't it? Um, a couple of announcements. We, like I said, we like to start them uh, right out. Great, it's kind of like my glasses. Right? Um, one thing that now that I see that that paper, Anna Myers. I don't know if any of you know. If you know her, uh, she's a member of CSL, but she was also in Nepal during the uh, earthquake. She went over there for a vacation. And, and was also going to work with the kids over there. And while over there, I need not tell you what happened. And so the beautiful thing is, is that when she went to come back, she decided not to, and to go ahead and stay there and continue helping. So if she can hear it from here, let's give her a wonderful Hello. And there was a second earthquake, too. Now we give it up to uh, Anna, yes. Directly after service, we have our monthly men and uh, women's uh, gathering. Um, they would be separate. Um, and we call it the Mindful Men's Treehouse. Uh, there isn't a treehouse yet, but eventually, in that vision, there will be. And then we have uh, the consciousness. Um, what is the name of it? <laughs> <laughs> women in consciousness. Thank you. Connection. <laughs> there you go, connected women. Um, <laughs> If you're new here, it is not all about me, trust me. Um, but uh, that's happening right afterwards. We have our wonderful youth director here, uh, and we just absolutely love Janice, who sits in um, here every week and just waits for our, our program to just grow, grow, grow. And um, let me see what else we have here. As you know, we're looking for a new home. Lots of uh, little bites are coming in for our new center. We are growing, which is beautiful. Uh, we have our two-year birthday coming up, and we have our fundraiser. Uh, we have one a year, and that's for our building, um, you know, more and more of CSL Kauai. But July 12th is our big bash, and that's two years. We call it our terrific twos. There's no terrible twos where we come from. It's terrific twos. And our wonderful Rob Jones has this... Um, beautiful banner and it just kind of tells where we are. So if you're interested in that, just talk to us or uh, go online. Um, we are live streaming now, by the way, welcome. That's probably why this was down a bit. Uh, we are live streaming, which is great. Uh, that means that a lot of our members, a lot of people are able to see us off island and those who don't want to get out of bed and just have their coffee, I'm noticing that's very popular also. So whether or not this was a good idea, we will find out very soon. Um, and let me see, live streaming, oh, Memorial Day, the last one before we get started. Memorial Day, uh, we're going to have something very special that Rita and I did years ago at a CSL um, in Burbank. And we're, what we'll do is we'll have two vases on each side, and you bring a flower in remembrance of someone who has transitioned or someone you just want to remember, and we're going to build a memorial uh, bouquet for them. So it's a wonderful thing. You just put it in there, say their name. We just all hold the consciousness for them. So feel free to come next week with a flower of any kind. And I believe that's it. And Marta here will be at the bookstore. And Marta, just give a little shout out. And we have our Cliff Notes um, as our special uh, book of the month. Because if you've ever read the Science of Mind text, you would realize that sometimes people want a little better understanding. So we have Cliff Notes from Reverend Cliff. <laughs> 
we just, in this new thought philosophy, we never stop being creative. Um, and then we have um, this called Paddington's Wake Up Call, which yours truly and also Rita, we worked on and put together this wonderful little children's book, which I believe every adult should read because it's about um, growing up. And not growing up in a way of leaving your childhood, but to wake up from the uh, caterpillar to the butterfly. So, if you know anyone you want to send that to, that's back in the bookstore as well. Ah, take a deep breath, we're done. Ah, nice. Nice. And we're going to light the peace candle. Rita will be lighting that. Uh, we decided not to wait for peace to happen. We decided to start it right here. And in my belief, in our belief, and we believe that um, peace starts with ourselves. So if you expect to start it out there and work back, it doesn't really work that way. So today I invite us all to just find that place of peace within us as we light this candle. Ah, oh, so just get comfortable. This is our time of meditation, our time of centering, our time of just being. Just being the wonderful, magnificent beings that we are. And I chose a uh, seed thought that no one claimed, so it will be anonymous. When writing the story of your life, don't let anyone else hold the pen. One more time. When writing the story of your life, don't let anyone else hold the pen. Enjoy your time.
When writing the story of your life, don't let anyone else hold the pen. And staying in this safe place, this safe space that we have created here in this very room, what I know is that there is a presence, a power, doesn't even need a name because it is everything seen and unseen. And I am so grateful to celebrate this presence inside of me. And this presence is inside each and every one of us. It is everywhere. And the invitation has been accepted for this presence, this power to just fill our hearts, fill this room, fill this life, this thing called life, and it is good. So I know that everyone here in this room has come here on purpose divine purpose, because there is no accidents in the mind of good. So knowing that, I just let this celebration service unfold easily, effortlessly, joyously, filled with love, filled with passion, filled with laughter. Ah, so knowing that, we just settle into this place of mahalo, this place of gratitude, and from this place, everything is manifested. So knowing that this is the absolute truth, we just let it be as one in consciousness, we say. And so it is. Hmm. So take some time to just stretch a little. Just mm, celebrate this thing called our body. We get to uh, move through and out of spirit. So aloha again. I've got the louder mic if you want no, that's okay. <laughs> Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Kauai, where we practice the science of mind and spirit. And imagine back in the 1920s when a man named Ernest Holmes stood up and said, there's a power for good in the universe greater than we are, and we get to use it. And from the moment that he spoke those words, thousands of people came to hear him and to know that they could better their lives. From wherever they were, they could grow and expand into the consciousness that, that, that knowing that the presence of God, the presence of love, the presence of light, whatever we want to call it, is who and what we are. And so here we are, Center for Spiritual Living Kauai, and we welcome you, and we're going to enjoy this service. I just know it. And I see a lot of new faces. Yes, <laughs> And I realized that I said who was to the left and who was to the right, but I never said who I was. I just took it for granted. But if you are new, I am Reverend Patrick. And um, also at this time of acknowledgement, the new people, before we do that, I do want to acknowledge one of our peeps from the mainland uh, who we went to ministerial school with and we became ministers together, and that's Reverend Jamie Klein. Mm -hmm. So, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> he gets his, and our center photographer would be Kelly. Um, 
Thank so, who is here for the very first time, and there's no way to get around it because we know who you are. Just, just raise your hand. Uh huh. We have a little something for you. Uh huh. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. <laughs> and then if Roseanne will hand me one right here, I will. Okay, good. Now the envelopes have arrived, and the winner is. Oh, back here. In the back row, we're right going to use them all in. today. Wow. In the back row. There we go. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. We have one winner. There we go. And yeah. Thank you. And we have something to tell them, right? Yes, we do. We 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 found something out about you before you got here, <laughs> and um, so we're going to announce it to everyone. How do you like that? So you guys ready to let them know? Yeah. All right. You are magnificent. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I bet you wonder how we found that out. I'll tell you how. Because we knew it about ourselves first, right? <laughs> so let's all say it together. I am magnificent. Now look to your left, right, whoever you want to look at, and let them know. You are magnificent. 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 I'm not supposed to point, but I am. All right. <laughs> You don't know how important this bell has become to us. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. That's all we do here. Good night. It was really nice having everyone here. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and so let us start out now with that beautiful energy that we have created by remembering who we are. Let's create it, but with some opening music. Yes. And it's in your program as well. Program. And if you'd like to stand, that would be great. Our island reporter is the first to go up. So. <laughs> Say hi. It's going to be one of those kind of days.
tell me the next one. <laughs> oh, so today we're going to do a little reading and um, an affirmation together and a treatment, a spiritual mind treatment, which merely is just knowing the truth, changing our minds, and bringing ourselves to the highest level of consciousness. So the, the reading I chose is, if we were to make a complete mental picture of ourselves as we would like to be, filling in all the details of our desire and trying to accept the whole thing as a present reality, we would soon demonstrate that the control of affairs is from within out and not from without in. The cause being that whatever exists as a mental picture in mind must tend to and finally does take form if the picture is really believed in and embodied. Simply put, you are what you think. Thoughts are things. And that was written by um, Dr. Ernest Holmes. So with that in mind, I have an affirmation for us. It's two sentences. And it goes like this. I'll say it once and then we'll say it together in parts, okay? My mental image of myself is now one of love and perfection. This perfect image is reflected as my life now. Okay? We'll do the first sentence together. My mental image of myself is now one of love and perfection. This perfect image is reflected as my life now. And now just put your hand on your heart and we're going to do it one more time and really feel it. My mental image of myself is now one of love and perfection. This perfect image is reflected as my life now. Okay, so just take that and just hold that in consciousness. As I speak my word, knowing that there really is only one mental cause, one mental image that is all perfection, that is all life, that is all source, that is all good, that is all beauty, that is all divine, that is all joy, that is all everything, everything held within itself and existing within itself. And I know that perfect image is what we are, what I am, and what each and every person in this room is, that perfect divine image, that perfect divine prototype, whatever we want to call it. It is perfect, and it is who and what we are. We are nothing but that. So I know in this moment that I accept that right now as my image, and I accept it as the image of each and every person in this room, and I know that that perfection in whatever area of our life goes out from here, from within, into each and every one of our lives in our own individual way. Whether that be the perfect image of our creativity expressing, the perfect image of our financial affairs, the perfect image of our health, the perfect image of our health, the perfect image of our relationship to ourselves and to others, that comes from that divine perfect place, that divine place of beauty and love. I know that. I claim it. I announce it. I accept it. And I give thanks for it. I give thanks for the demonstration of my word right now in the individual life of each and every person in this room. So now with that gratitude in my heart, I just let go. I know that there is a law that takes this word and makes it so. So I let my word go into and as that law, knowing that it is done perfectly for each of us, as we say together as one. And so it is now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, staying in this beautiful space, I am going to turn the time over to Jeremy and Amy to sing for us and play for us. And just sit back and enjoy. All right. 
This is a song uh, I wrote with my friend Alonzo in the backyard at our house where the fruit trees are full and abundant and falling off the tree. And uh, this is a kind of an upbeat song. I'll be like, it's called Straighten Up. <laughs> sneak them over here. Uh, they haven't had them for a couple weeks, so now they're back in action. So thank you. You guys, you know I have to say it. 
Thank you, mahalo, mahalo. You are just, just the heart of CSL Kauai in this in this world of, of music and artist expression. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and guess what happened while we were singing? Away, away. Beautiful flowers appeared by Loria. Yes. Ah, so now, today we are talking about, this whole month we've been delving into this idea of the imagination, and it's taken many, many directions. Today we're talking about the image makers. The reason I'm quiet is I want to see what came to your mind when you thought of an image maker. Now, a lot of you know that we're from the Los Angeles, Hollywood area, <laughs> and there's a lot of image making going on. In, in Hollywood. And there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not here to, to judge anything. I was a part of it for a lot of years and absolutely enjoyed it. But it's interesting um, that it is always going to come down to what's your own image. What do, you, what, what, what do you think is your image? And like we talked about last week, many people have been telling us what our image is for a lot of years. And sometimes we even buy it. But today we're going to turn all of that around with our message today, and that is to, um, to find that place in ourselves that we, we know our own image. Bless you. So I want to start with a, uh, a quote from Ernest, Dr. Ernest Holmes. And just take this in as we start this whole journey together. Man has the ability to choose what he will do with his life and is unified with the law which automatically produces his choice, or her choice. While he does not have the ability to destroy the idea of himself, he does have the ability to deface it, to make it appear discordant, but he cannot, and I will repeat this, he cannot destroy the divine image. And that is the good news here. <laughs> that is the good news. So, ma so no matter how your life is looking, how much you think you might have messed up in certain areas, there's that part of yourself that is there to say, shine, baby, shine. Yeah. That's exactly what it's saying. You can't hurt me. We may be able to hurt one another or not um, live our life to the absolute fullest of what we think, but we can't. There's a divine image that says, do what you need to do. I'm here, and I live within you. I was thinking of this whole idea of the true image and this whole idea of image makers, and we see it on magazines. Everybody's there, they're trying to make the image of, so that we like them, so that we buy them. Marilyn Monroe was a beautiful example of that, this rich divine image. And she bought some things, and we bought it too, and we paid for it, and I believe she paid for some of it as well. So I have a little story for you about this insight, and I loved your reading, uh, Rita, because it really went in alignment with this from the inside out, and that's what I believe our whole philosophy is about. And it, we have to start here with whatever it is that we want to experience, we must start here and walk from that. So, it reminded me of a story um, when I moved to New York City. I was so excited because I was going to live in New York City. And for some reason, I never thought that was going to happen for me because I was from the Bay Area in Los Angeles, but I was going to move to New York and didn't know anyone except one person. And he knew me from waiting tables back in Los Angeles. But nobody, this big city, nobody knew who Patrick Farron was, which left my imagination wide open. Because that way, when I got there, the only person you would see is the one that I created for you to see. Those were the, in the days that I was the outside in. And so I thought, how do I want to um, be? Now, just to let you know that this personality that you see in front of you has pretty much always been a part of who I am. 
call it whatever you want, because I'm sure you have an image of me if you've been around long enough. But here's the deal. I thought to myself, what if I was to change that and become something else when I got there? So I started work and changed the clothes. 30 pounds lighter, think about it. Tight jeans, black jeans. <laughs> I got all James Deaned out. I was in preparation for New York City. And I would go there, not as Patrick excited about life, I would go there brooding. <laughs> because I knew that would be sexy. I knew that everyone would think, who is he? He doesn't talk much. <laughs> So, oh, but I did it. That's how good I was. So I went there and I would go to clubs. Yes, even your reverend if I went to clubs at one time. And, and I would, I remember thinking, now what would make me really cool and slip my hair back a little bit, have a little chiseled cheek model thing happening. And I thought, I'll just stand there. And everybody's dancing around, but not me. I was just there, <laughs> present. And I would see everyone kind of checking me out, kind of like, who's that guy? He's not talking. He's not anything. He's just standing there. How, in, how intriguing. And then when we walked by, he kind of like... <laughs> yeah, we're not even a big nod, man. We're just talking. <laughs> so I was in heaven. And here's the deal. I was telling Rita in the car. She said, oh, my God. <laughs> And I was, and I was just, and I was all standing up straight, and I just thought to myself, I'm living in my own world, and everybody wants to know what it is, <laughs> right? So they were like magnets to me. Hi, how are you? Fine. <laughs> What's your name, Patrick? Because <laughs> the important thing, if you're cool, they can't really understand your name, <laughs> because you're just Patrick. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, that went on for a while, but guess what happened, though? When I would meet somebody, and then we would get to know each other, guess who came out? <laughs> Hi, everybody with us! <laughs> Just kidding. But so, that, so that personality, that excited personality, they said, man, where are you from? And, we, you know, and I'd be like, I'm just I'm from Los Angeles. And before I knew it, I'd just, oh, it was great. I mean, ah, I mean, ah. And so they would say, oh, what happened to James Dean? I don't see him any longer. So my point of this, if there is one, is that uh, don't judge a book by its cover, for one. But also, I was trying to go from the outside in. And it took away my authenticity. It took away who I truly am. Because I didn't want to be this excitable person that people thought, oh, he's so over the top. Oh, I love that word. Those, that sentence, he's over the top. You bet I am. You bet I'm over the top. This thing called life is something to get terribly excited about. And we all show our excitement in different ways. But this was not me. <laughs> Even though I did feel, I will admit, live streaming and all, I felt incredibly sexy. Because there is something very sexy about doing nothing. But, so, to do the story that coming here, one of my agreements to myself was that I would always be transparent, I would always be authentic, even if it didn't look that way to you. I would honor me. And I would live by the image, the divine image in me. And now I find such a balance. And I'm still sexy. <laughs> Yeah, so that was a big lesson. So when I came here, I... <laughs> what, 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 what? I know you're going, I know he is. I don't know why. He um, but that's why I like that, that quote, when writing the story of your life, don't let anyone else, you know, use the pen, because that's what I really learned from this. And the balance was that I do know how um, to just be, and when we opened up this center, I said, 
No matter what they think I will be, we will be as a team authentic. And then we also will be transparent. And if you like it, oh my God, we'll be dancing. And if you don't, we'll still be dancing. Say yes. Yes, I say yes. Your head is going no. Oh. Yes. These are these are other image makers. Would be Loya, the, the image maker of yeah. Because and that's just like I'm saying. Even about that, Loya is a good example. You know, my head's doing what it needs to do naturally, and it might be saying no when I mean yes. You know, so I just saying that we have to really honor one another. And if we could just, and I invite us. Let's let everybody be who they are. Let's let our kids be who they are. Hello, parents. Let them be who they are. Let them live the life. Let them make the mistakes that they need to make. Let your husbands, wives, girlfriends, let them be who they are. And if they're not who you want to be, then, then you'll have to take a look at that too and not be afraid of that. We're here on one divine purpose, and that's to live life from its fullest. We started with a gift, and we will end and continue with a gift. So I have blabbed enough. It's time for me to turn this mic over to uh, the beautiful Reverend Rita, but I just want you to know I'm going back into my uh, moment. <laughs> I just want to see if the sexy thing still worked. Anyway, I love you. The message is that uh, we are made in the image of God, life force. Somehow I think we got it mixed up a little bit, and we made God in the image of man. And we need to go back again and turn that back. We are in the image, and if God doesn't feel good to you, life force feels great to me. That's where we need to come from. Those are the eyes we need to start seeing. And that's it. So just remember, <laughs> if you ever want to feel sexy, just... I'm doing that for live stream right now. There you go. <laughs> Namaste. Beautiful Reverita. That is so funny. Him? No, I'm going to tell you something. Can I just take your picture? When I first met him, well, if you can believe this, he was my acting teacher. Ooh, all right. Well, <laughs> but I distinctly remember, you made me think of it. You were standing down at the end of a hall. This was before we were going together or anything. And I said, oh, Patrick, that was a great class. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. And you went. start where you were we did we came here really self-actualized and then after that whatever we did was an addition to that or a detraction from that not can't be an addition right like what he said in his quote before about um you can't deface that beautiful divine image that you are ernest holmes wrote by individuality is meant self-choice volition, conscious mind, personified spirit, complete freedom, and a power to back up that freedom, being the law. We cannot Im imagine a mechanical or unspontaneous individuality. To be real and free, indiv individuality must be created in the image of perfection and let alone to make the great discovery itself. So we've come, we're in this image of perfection, that's our divine individuality, but we possibly don't know it. Maybe some of our great mystics of the past knew it, and maybe they didn't. Maybe they grew into it too. But for whatever reason it is, we've had to be left alone to discover that. And for me, I've had a lot of pencils or whatever it was, pens in other people's hands telling me who I was and who I, who I should be and all of that. Um, from movie stars, from musical theater characters, from, from my own parents, 
you know? So our personality is like what we get from all that, what we get from the people that bring us up, from our friends, from the things we hear, from the TV, we start to develop a personality. But what's really underneath that personality is that divine image, like Patrick said. So when I was growing up, one of my great images was Julie Andrews. <laughs> so I had this image of myself, I'm a singer, as you all know, that I was Julie Andrews, even though my father thought I was, you know, the greatest Tosca singer in the world, Tosca, Puccini singer in the world. <laughs> underneath there was this little girl who wanted to sing like Julie Andrews, but who looked like Anna Magnani or something. And I've been told that. Not that I look like her, but the essence, right? So I go into auditions singing my little Julie Andrews voice. <laughs> and they'd look at me and they'd go, in fact, I went in for this one um, audition for a, a, a fortune teller of some sort, and they took it off my picture, and they thought, oh, my God, she's perfect for this. And I went in and started reading for the part, and I went into this, like, high-pitched voice, and they were like, oh, could you read that again? And maybe, like, we didn't, you know, you don't sound at all like your picture. So anyway, I, know, I had this image of myself as something different. Then one day... I started to accept myself for who I was. I mean, I still wanted to be Julianne, and I still wanted to sing like her, but I wanted to bring Rita to that. And I remember going into an audition for Camelot in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it was a big production. It was, it was, it was a big production. And I thought, I'll never get this part because I don't look like Gwen is supposed to look. I mean, I, I don't look it. But I went in, and I brought myself to the role to such an extent, I still had my beautiful soprano voice, but I brought Rita to the role to such an extent that the director said, I wasn't going to cast someone like you. I wanted somebody with blonde hair and blue eyes and blah, blah, blah. But when you, when you st started to read, I saw Guinevere. So we were taught that as actors when we were in our, I don't know, we're a lot on acting today. We don't usually talk about acting, but we were taught that as actors to bring ourselves to the role, to not bring the role to us, but to bring our individuality to the role. So we all play roles in our lives, right? We do, we're mothers, we're teachers, we're husbands, we're wives, we're whatever, we're everything. But how much of the time do we bring our authentic self to those roles and how, many how much time do we give ourselves the permission to do that? And authentic selves doesn't mean like we get to say whatever we want and insult people or that's not our authentic <laughs> self or whatever it is. Our authentic selves is that divine place within us that is our true selves that comes out as our divine urge, whatever that is, our way of expressing. There's, 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 there's ways that we express Maybe it's through art. Maybe it's through music. Maybe it's through being an accountant. Maybe it's through being a hospice worker. Maybe it's through being whatever we're being, a cook, a chef, a, a minister, whatever, that, that the divine urge is coming through us to bring that out. That's our contact point with that authentic self. If we really listen to it, I mean, I went through my life a lot listening to it, and I see other kids doing this, listening to everything their parents told them they should be to be safe. And that's great. Our parents loved us. But inside was this other thing bubbling up. And it couldn't stop from coming out. It even came out when I went into perhaps professions that weren't the right ones for me because I found out pretty quick. But they, they, um, that thing kept coming up and hitting me in the head and saying, you need to move with that, Rita. In fact, like when I was in Los Angeles, I couldn't get a part to save a day because I was trying to fit into something. Because I... I I was trying to fit in, but it was the moment that I decided to bring my true self to myself in Los Angeles when I started to succeed. I wasn't like a big movie actress or anything, but I started to do my Italian one-woman show, and I started to succeed, and I was authentic, and then I was helping other people. I was changing lives. When we bring our authentic self to others, that's the greatest gift we can give. So whatever that takes, and I believe that it takes just allowing ourselves to accept it, to just surrender to it, and just say, I am here, Spirit, move through me, use me in whatever way 
it, I need to be used right now. Whatever is required, let me serve, let me give, let me give that special, amazing place within myself out into experience. And you're a gift. You're a gift to the world because nobody, remember, nobody has our thumbprint. Nobody has our individualization. As I wrote the other day on my blog, um, we just this beautiful woman just transi transitioned, Arita Tehran, and, and she's kept us up of her, through her transition on the Internet through Facebook. So we were with her pretty much till the last moment till she left. And everybody's saying, you know, they're sorry and, and they're going to miss her and, not, you know, we're all going to miss her. But she's not gone. That little piece of the puzzle of the whole thing of the of the whole thing is still here and continues to live and continues to influence us and continues to gift us. We're never gone. So the most important thing is to let that out and surrender to it and to bring it into life. Um, Ernest Holmes wrote, just as a fine architect uses only the best materials and plans most caref carefully how to construct his building, so should we, in the building of our personality, choose most carefully the kind of materials we wish to use. Each one builds according to the pattern of his own desires. So in other words, that desire, that desire to express that unique self, use the best of that. That's it. That is the best. There's nothing but that, really. Everything else, we're just covering it up with a paintbrush or we're giving to other people to do for us. So... I think that's our true me me our message today is the image makers, we're really the image makers, and there's one divine image, and we're it, and we get to express it. So, and if you don't know what it is, some people say, I don't know what it is, I don't know, I don't know what I am, I don't know who I am, I, I, I talk to a lot of people going through that. The thing is, you do know. So, there's, a, there's an energy, a law, we call the law of cause and effect, that says it's done unto you as you believe, and if you keep telling yourself you don't know, it's going to be keep telling you you don't know. So tell yourself you do know and watch what happens. I do know who I am. I might not be seeing it right now, but I do know. I do know. And you do know. Namaste. I do know. <laughs> I do know that you, you are absolutely magnificent. <laughs> I know, so are you. So are all of you. <sighs> so this is our time of affirmative giving, and that just simply means this is our time to, to share, and whatever it is that you're giving, whether it be in the form of God in action, which is what money is, or anything else, whatever it is, but most of all, it's your consciousness that you brought in this room, and that you're giving in this time and space. And just take a moment to just put it near your heart, if they're just your hand there, and just know that we give because we are from that unlimited, unlimited source of supply. And we give of ourselves and we give of this divine image. So, Should we do our affirmation as in, in your program? Divine love consecrates, consecrates my, my gift. gift. It goes, it goes forth to, to heal, heal, prosper, and bless. It is evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I give freely today, knowing it returns to me abundantly. I take it away, Joe.
love in abundance, sweet sensations of abundance. Yes, we are live. <laughs> oh, and let's just take a moment to just uh, bathe in the laughter and to the gratitude of not only this, this flow of contributions, donations, tithing, call it whatever you want, but I know there is even something more happening, and that is that divine consciousness that is filling this room and is filling our lives. And I know that whatever is in these baskets it goes forth from this place, and it just does great things in the law of circulation. That's all we're doing, is circulating round and around and around. So with so much mahalo and gratitude in my heart, I just simply allow this abundance to do what abundance does, and that is to give freely. As together we say, and so it is now. So thank you so much, and just um, for those of you who are here for the first time, we are a tithing center, and 10% of what you give goes out into the world. And in um, April, it went out to um, Nepal, so through the Rotary Club, so just so you know, all right? So it does definitely goes, heals for, goes forth to heal, prosper, and bless, not just this ministry, but out. And so, I didn't mention where the men and women were meeting at. Uh, the men meet over by the Hayal, down by um, uh, at Lidgate Park, and the women are at the. You meet at the pavilion first, and then you find. Yeah, your way. and look for Deborah because she's going to be looking for a Deborah. place. There's Deborah. Okay. There you go. All right. And, so, uh, thank yous. Yes. So okay. Start so with flowers. We'll start with flowers. Even though we, we'll, do, <laughs> we'll double that. Thank you. Thank you. This is so beautiful. Thank you. They're so beautiful. And thank you, Dan. And for doing the live streaming. It just makes such a difference in the ministry here to have people be able to watch when they leave here and people that love us off island that they can tune in and they do. <laughs> so thank you for that. And Marta, thank you for for taking on the bookstore. Yes. And and expanding it. Marta has a book back there too. She'll yeah. Tell Marta you has a book it. and so does Deborah. I think you have Deborah a book back there, back. right? And yeah. yeah. And uh, Roseanne for doing the programs. Thank you, thank you, thank Very you. Good. And for everything else you do. Yeah. And um and Rob, of course, for your artwork. And also, yeah. he just designed something for us for the uh, New Thought Conference in Canada. And the to banner. Be in that, he does. He's, he's wonderful. Mm -hmm. We're all wonderful. <laughs> and to Michelle and Ron for helping us um, clean up, set up, whatever they're asked to whatever do. They just needed. kind of fill in. And it's just a really wonderful thing. And, and our beautiful <laughs> greeters today. Yes. Who are our greeters today? Deb, Deborah, and Stephanie. And Stephanie, Over thank there. you. There's so many people just really stepping up to assist us, and it's really, really great because we can't do it ourselves. Oh, and so right. even though we no, have tried. even though we tried, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so we remind and and Kelly. Thank you. Kelly, Kelly just kind of just always shows up and helps, and Karen's like that too. They just go, "What can I do? What can I do?" And then these two light beans over here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you are amazing, and thank you for bringing your original music to us, because that's so special. Yes, really absolutely. great. Yeah, that's great. I love it. And have I forgotten anyone? You're all wonderful. Right. And you've all helped us at one one time or another, so and for thank you. That and, are thank new, you. And, and thank you. <laughs> but, but, uh, for those of, for the, those of you that are new. <laughs> I can't even do it. For those of you that are new, um, thank you for coming today and just sharing your consciousness with me and with Rita, and with this entire family. We are getting such a big family, and it feels so good. And Gabi, who's sitting back there, who holds the space, especially when we get energetically, like just going out into the world, <laughs> she's our anchor. So thank you. Thank you very, and very much. And Janice. Nice. And Janice. Who holds you. the space for our kids, knowing they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, they're coming. Yeah. Maybe they're just waiting for our new home. They so, might be. Already. Yeah. All right, everyone. I'm ready. So we're ready for a closing song? Yes. You can stand. Oh, no, actually. This is my first day here at the uh, center. <laughs> we like to do this wonderful song in a circle and just kind of follow your neighbors. They'll kind of know what to do with it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
gratitude for this time together, this time we've had, this community, and I know it just continues as we leave here, as we go into our individual lives, our individual ways, that the heart is always connected. So I give great thanks, great blessing to each of us, to all of it, and I just release my word as law, knowing it is done, as we say together, and so it is now. Only one. 